I'm taking a road trip I'm packing light Won't need material things From this life Looking forward to meeting Some people that I admire Can't wait to travel Hello, sweet spirits. Welcome to the show. My name is Suzanne Sorrell. I'm the host and founder of Evermore Paranormal. Today, we're in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania on a paranormal road trip. In particular, I'm standing in front of the Crystal Wan. Let's go inside and learn more about this place. Hello, now we're inside of the Crystal Wan and I'm talking to the owner, Kathy O'Dell. So please welcome Kathy to the show. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for letting us come in and talk I'm to glad you. Glad you're here. Uh, you know I come in the store all the time, and um, I usually shop, but then I started hearing about some of the paranormal activity that occurs here. So tell me some of the stories. Well, what it amounts to is we used to have little things happening here. Every mm -hmm. once in a while we'd find books on the floor when you came in in the morning. I would come in in the morning to check things in this room and check stock and the pendulums would be all knotted up because I had them on this bar that went like this. Mm -hmm. Well, we have people who come in here between the tourists. Some people are psychics. Some people are mediums. They take vacations too and they'll stop in our shop and they're the ones that started saying, you've got spirits here. You've got ghosts. Mm -hmm. I know one couple came in one day and the husband looked at the wife and said, did you hear that? And she said, yeah, it's kids giggling. And he said, yeah, it's back there. She says, yeah, they're in that corner. They come to the counter, they're talking to us and they're saying, oh yeah, you've got kids from the orphanage up the street because mm -hmm. that's supposed to be all haunted. Mm -hmm. What they did is, I said, the building wasn't here then. And he said, yeah, but it was an empty lot and the kids used to come down here the ones that could sneak away to play sometimes, mm -hmm. and their spirits still do. And he said, half the thing, what's going on, because I thought, why? And he's saying, they're giggling and laughing because they're doing things, they're pulling pranks. I said, you mean like, and he said, yeah. I explained about how I'd straighten mm -hmm. things out and come back an hour later and they'd be all twisted. And it's like, there's no wind in that room. Right. He said, it's them. It's like the books flying off the shelf. He said, it's them. It's like, mm -hmm. okay. Um, so so we just accepted that because they weren't the only ones. We had had, like I said, other mediums mm -hmm. and people who were sensitive say they could feel the spirit of a child here. Mm -hmm. One said there was a little girl named Danny that used to play in this room. Mm -hmm. Just different little stories of from course. strangers. These aren't people we were, or they were trying to hustle us. They were here for mm -hmm. today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But they would tell us about these things. And I know one night, you know, it was just a simple story. Mm -hmm. I came in, we left, my niece and I closed up, come back in the next morning, and there's a book out here in the middle of this room on the floor. And it's like the books back then were over in that corner. There's no way in hell it fell off of a right. shelf. They, they would fall down. It doesn't fly across a room. Exactly. So that's mostly what I've mm -hmm. experienced. It hasn't been a whole lot more than little things like that. Right. So as for, you told me, though, that the spirits are coming in. I mean, the, the psychics are coming in, and they're saying that your mom's here. Oh, yeah. I want to hear all, <laughs> I, I wanna hear all about it. And it's, That's the trippiest part, because I know in the very beginning when I opened up, there were two women came in and they would introduce themselves that they do readings and this mm -hmm. and that from my forget where. And the one woman said, there's two women in that room. And it's like, what? She says, you've got two women sitting in that, uh, mm -hmm. the window seat in the bay window there. She says, they're just sort of like, they've got this attitude. And I knew right away it was my <laughs> mother and her sister because my mother and Aunt Mary were like mm -hmm. this. They were just very tight. But they, we used to call them the doom and gloom sisters because <laughs> they were just, oh, Lord, they na negative. Let's just say mm -hmm. they were constantly picking. Nothing was ever good enough. Nothing was ever right enough. You know, it was like, oh, Mom, please. Mm -hmm. But apparently they're hanging out there. And I said, why? And she said, the other, 
the impression she was getting is they're watching for shoplifters and to make sure nothing's going wrong. Oh. They're here to protect me and to protect the shop. Oh, they're that's keeping nice. out the... Mm -hmm. I thought, well, if I've got them on my side, I've got no problems. That's awesome. I wonder if any, you know, you're saying that and they sit in the window. I wonder if anybody's ever seen we them. We had Actually another woman them. come in here just a couple months mm -hmm. ago because that's mom's picture. We had it up here. And she kept going back to the spirit board in that room and mm -hmm. coming out. My niece was working that day and talking to her and saying she's getting messages. And she came back out again and she said, there's a woman back there, and she started to like describe her personality, and Mom Karen's like, yeah, and because she doesn't like to feed them, she wants to see what they come with, and she kept let me go back, and she kept going back and forth, bringing these little snippets to mm -hmm. my niece, and at one point she said, what was her name? And she said, Peggy, Peg. She says, no, that's not it. I'm getting a lot of names. And she went back and came back and says. She says, you're her daughter? She says, no, I was her granddaughter, my aunt. Mm -hmm. I was the, she said, no, she's telling me you're her daughter. Well, the thing about mm -hmm. this, because a chill went through her, it goes through me when I talk about it. When my niece was born, we always, there was a sister. I had a younger sister when mm -hmm. we were kids, and she was mama's favorite. And she died when she was eight. I was mm -hmm. nine. Karen Ann was born like a couple months later. And all through growing up, we all just kept thinking she's just like Marlene. And mm -hmm. then when we got older and we got into all this stuff, it's like, I figure you're the reincarnation. There's no doubt in my mind. It just always felt like mm -hmm. the energy was the same. This woman's telling her she, and Karen mm -hmm. and it's like, don't tell me that. It's like, <laughs> she'd been hearing it from us all her life. She didn't want to hear it from a strange woman. And I said, I told you, you're my sister. You're not my niece. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's a, that was like, oh. Wow. Well, you know, um, so your mom's name is this a beautiful picture. Oh, yeah, that was the other part of the story was oh, about okay. her name. Mm -hmm. Karen was saying her name was Peggy, but she said that wasn't right. I said, honey, your grandmother always spent her life telling us her name is Eleanor Claire for Dallas Joanne <laughs> Closterman <laughs> Runyon Keating because oh, okay. she had four first names. She had her maiden name. She had her first husband's ex and then the second, uh -huh. you know, our father. I said, whenever people would talk about people with funny names, mom would go off and list all seven names because mm -hmm. that was her pride and joy. I said, that's what she was telling the woman. Mm -hmm. You might have known her as grandma or Peg, mm -hmm. everybody, but to mama, she was. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I'm so glad. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful picture. I love that picture. Oh, that was her tending bar or at the bar <laughs> when she was young. <laughs> well, she, she was smiling bar. happy. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, she was the first female bartender in the Union in Cumberland, Maryland. She oh, was wow. always proud of herself for that. <laughs> so, you know, when you were talking about your mom, the whole time you were talking, I got chills. I mean, I was like, oh, I, I got, got the chills. Too. I know you like, got she's too. around us right now, I think. And oh, the other sure. thing, when you mentioned the pranks, uh, the, the children doing pranks, you talked about the nodding of the pendulums. That happens to me every time I um, have a pendulum and it's a little bag. And I know I put it in there right. I pull it out and it's knotted. So I, I just, it's weird, the chain knots. Well, yeah, this, these were hanging. This yeah. is the problem. I had them hanging on hooks on a rod. And I, that's right, why nice and neat. Separated nice, and that's why I put that new one in there to keep them separated so I didn't have to mm -hmm. do that all the time because I was getting tired of playing that game. <laughs> yeah, so in sum, you have some children's spirits. You have your mom and your aunt, and who knows who else, but... Nothing negative, you don't think? I mean, it sounds like Most it's all positive people who here. have ever come in have told us that they really never felt negative energy. It's right. usually a positive energy for the spirits. Right. I don't know if it's the stones or the sage or everything else. We still keeps right. them out, but that or my mother standing guard at the door. <laughs> well, what, so we are almost out of time, but one other question that just came to mind is, do you, are, you have all these kind of products. Do you guys have to... Uh, clear the place, cleanse the place regularly? Yeah, Iris will cleanse it. Whenever she thinks something bad's come through or whatever, or somebody says they're feeling bad, she'll sage. Oh, okay. That's and I periodically sprinkle lavender or do different things just to hopefully wow. keep it charged. Happy! <laughs> well, definitely. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and okay. we will be right back. All right. My 
journey skating for the gold taught me a lot, but my journey with breast cancer has been one of my greatest teachers. Every woman's breast cancer is unique. Be Wiser educates and empowers women to take control of their breast cancer treatment plan and help navigate their own path beyond five years. Talk to your doctor about information and tests to personalize a treatment plan that fits your needs. I did. Be informed, be wiser, support survivors like us. Losing weight's a lot harder than gaining it, but with every step, I lower my risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And that makes every step very much worth the effort. Learn how you can help stop diabetes. Visit CheckupAmerica.org or call 1-800-DIABETES. Welcome back. Now I'm sitting with Iris, the tarot card reader here at the Crystal One. So please welcome Iris. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Thank you for, for coming on the show. Um, I know I've been coming to you for years to get my own card readings. The first time you read for me, it was like, oh my goodness, you were right on the money. So I've been coming back and I just want to know, when did you start feeling that you had psychic abilities? Since I was a child. I always mm -hmm. had experiences. I would see ghosts, oh, people, yeah. and I didn't understand mm -hmm. and what was going on with them. So. I had to figure it out as I went along because nobody would talk about it. Oh yeah, I mean really people weren't talking about that stuff until the last 10 or 15 yeah, years right. with the shows and so on. So do you remember the first experience that you had? I was very small and I remember hearing thumping noises mm -hmm. on the steps, very heavy thumping noises. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a giant, I don't know, a giant rat or something because I didn't know what it was. Turns out Apparently there was a ghost in that house that I was staying at my grandpa's. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go out and try to, and, you know, see what the thumps were? I was were? scared. <laughs> oh yeah. I was little. Yeah. Really small. So, so you've had these abilities all your life. Did you, when did you start actually embracing the, the abilities? Like, I have abilities, now I want to share those abilities and... Probably. Probably, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Probably when I was 14. Yeah. I was babysitting my brothers. My mother was out. I s went to go up the steps and I looked up and we were in this old house. And I looked up the steps and there was a full, full on woman mm -hmm. standing there. And then I realized I could see through her. Then I realized there was water like dripping down the steps from mm -hmm. her. And it, it freaked me out, but then I got curious after I got over being freaked out the next day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she looked right at me. She was not what they call residual. Mm -hmm. She looked right at me, scared me. Turns out that house used to be um, part of a bigger home years ago, and they had part, they'd had part of the Underground Railroad. Oh, wow. Okay. They, and there was a railroad way back, and they would get the slaves and the people to the railroad. Mm -hmm. And that's why she was still there in that space. Did you? And was she that got drowned because of her what uh, she did? Oh, really? W was that the only time you saw this woman, or did you see yes. her more than once? Only time I ever saw her, but I started it with goosebumps. Yeah, me too. I always get goosebumps when I I'm know. with you. <laughs> that means we got some company, right? Some obviously from the previous segment, positive, yes. positive spirits here. So yes. since you now you are here at the Crystal One and you just started doing psychic development classes, I want to yeah. come to your classes. So <laughs> I want to hear all about it. Tell me all about that. Well, we've been talking about it and talking about it. And finally, Kathy said, okay, I can do them here. Mm -hmm. So I offered a class that sold out in a day and a half. Wow. Oh, it'll sell out even quicker as the word and spreads. It was just a two-night thing. First, um, one night on like Tuesday, on mm -hmm. one night after hours, and then the next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And it's people have been calling, wanting to do this class. It's just an introductory class mm -hmm. to start with. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it again at the end of October, and my second part of that will be on Halloween night. Oh my goodness! I'm so excited. <laughs> Is it? Oh, do, do you still have space? Maybe I might come by. I don't know. It just yeah. depends <laughs> if I'm. Are, are you still taking? Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And so, what do you learn in these classes? And I know you just you know you just give me generalities. I mean, you're learning how to be safe. Um, yes, that's the, the first the thing first I teach thing? is protection. Which I need that's to learn, which I've been yes, told. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the f mm -hmm. first thing that I, I, learn, I teach people right. is about protection because I've seen too many disastrous results from not protecting for people. Mm -hmm. And so what else, what other kind of things do you teach in it? 
I teach about the different clairs, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, clairvoyance, and I help them to figure out maybe what their gifts are, because most of the people that come believe they have gifts. Oh, yeah, yeah. And most I, of them do. Right, and we don't know, like I know I have some kind of gift, but I don't know what it is. I just know I'm hearing ghosts, I'm seeing them, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, well, that sounds really, really great. So, um, let's see. So, Kathy, the owner, told us about some paranormal activity that goes mm -hmm. on here in the shop. What have you experienced or heard about? Many, most of it I've experienced. Uh -huh. <laughs> I heard about the things that she talked about, but I didn't know about the beginnings with her mom mm -hmm. and her mother's sister. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that until I just heard that story today. Yeah, I always learn something in interviews that I didn't know. I think I know somebody. I, I'm like, oh, I didn't know you lived there or you knew this or you're... Really? You were that young in the first paranormal experience? So I learn something new every day. Every so day. Do you have you experienced obviously you do your readings in here? Yes. So do you have anything that comes or do you have to clear this place so, clear the space so that you're able to I put protection symbols. I'm a mm -hmm. Reiki master, so I go around and I put protection symbols all around. Okay. And I sage the space. Mm -hmm. I clear it all before people come in. Mm-hmm. So they don't, you know, have to ask me questions about all of that. It's safe. Oh, yeah. And um, so do you, you don't have any, like, spirits that are regular here or other experiences? Tell oh, me about no. the, the spirits, the stories that you've had in the shop. Tell me all about it. I'm one of the ones in the wintertime. I'm usually the one that's here during the day. So I sit at the desk, and I'm usually working with something. And so your mind is just open, mm -hmm. you know, just clear. And all of a sudden, there'll be a book fly off that shelf into the middle of that doorway. There's no way that that could happen You've witnessed random. it. Oh, yeah. You've witnessed it. And wow. it startles me. And, mm -hmm. and finally, one day, I said, really, can you please do that when somebody else is here? You're startling me. <laughs> You're scaring me. Not really? scared, scared, but. Oh, yeah, it does. It does throw you off. It does. You lose, you lose your focus kind of thing, you know. So uh, later that day, there was a couple standing here, and I kid you not, a book flew over to right behind them, and the girl jumped. And there's no way, if you see where the books are, when, we mm -hmm. go, when you go back out there, oh, yeah. and how it flew out into the middle, pretty much the middle of the doorway. That's how far it went. Wow. It couldn't just fall like that. Did you happen to notice the title of the book? I don't. Because that <laughs> might be. Next time, I was just thinking, next time it happens, whatever, see what that book is. She bought that book. It was oh, a book, I would have bought it, too. It was a book about It was meant to be. It was a book about a ghost in a house, in a place where she lives. Not the house, but okay. in that area. You know that was meant for that yes. book to fly she off while it. she was in here. <laughs> she bought it. It was meant to be. I said, that wasn't my trick, I swear, to get you a oh, buy a book. <laughs> that would be great. That would right. be great. So my a lot trick. of books. Every time somebody comes in, the book flies off. <laughs> right. Hey, that, book. That, that was that meant. Was, that was meant. She did that said, person have a reading that day, too, with you? She or no? did not. No. No. If I'm behind the counter, I can't do the reading. Oh, that's true. I know. I come in, I'm oh, she's but, working behind the counter. I can't get a reading today. <laughs> Sometimes people's people show up. People's. Mm -hmm that have passed, they show up during readings. Yeah, I know, um, when you're reading yeah, me, yeah. I know. We get chills and goosebumps every I've time. I've been having them since we've been sitting here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody, yeah. I've and there's, them. I don't mean to keep interrupting oh, you, no, but go I was ahead. pointing Sorry. to your throat because of your beautiful singing voice. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. That's why I was pointing to, that's one of your gifts. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But, so, yeah, yeah, other other ghosts and there's spirits? There's a lady who comes through here. Mm -hmm. She walks through. She's dressed very, very well. She's very obviously was well to do mm -hmm. and I would see her in my mind's eye mm -hmm. and I would just okay think of her and anyway there's a man in here one day he came to me to talk to me he said he was pulled across here from across the street we get that all the time really? they come in they give me messages about my daughter they don't know me they don't know her mm -hmm. mediums and they tell me that I have this mediumship gift and all this stuff that I'm not working with mm -hmm. as much as I should but he actually said there's a woman here now Mm -hmm. said she wants to meet you she wants to say hello mm -hmm. I was like okay he says she wants to shake your hand because she knows that you would do that I'm like okay I'm making like yeah light of it I kid you not my hand turned ice cold I could feel she shook my hand do you know I'm getting chills I like know, me too. unbelievable <laughs> like like ten times the she power shook I mean my hand and I just sat up. there mm -hmm. and I just said okay thank you and that was in this room? That was right here in this room. Do you think she is, um, we're running out of time, but oh. I was just going to ask you, do you think that, uh, what period of, you know, age? Like 1700s is what I got. By the clothing, you could tell, and the hairstyle probably. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been great talking to you. You too. Well, we're going to have to take a break. Okay. And we'll, 
we'll go out into the shop and walk around and do a tour of the shop. Great, thank you. Thank you, All Iris. Right. <laughs>
If they feel like answering our call If they feel like answering our call So thank you for joining me on another paranormal road trip. Until next time, peace out. Hello, sweet spirits. My name is Suzanne Sorrell. I'm the producer and host of the Evermore Paranormal Network. The Evermore Paranormal Network is a variety talk show that focuses on paranormal related topics. So tune in to the Evermore Paranormal Network right here on Fairfax Public Access. Can't wait to travel to the other side.